Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a thriller mystery film, Meet Grinder. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with Bus, a little girl with her head in a big jar, while her parents fight over money and vices. The scene also flashes a series of childhood traumas she experienced. One is when she's tied up in a chair, while her mother forces her to eat. There's even a time that her mother wounds her stepfather over his gambling, and his blood splatters across her face. It is an upcoping mechanism she has discovered, in hopes of drowning the voices and erasing the horrible memories. A mechanism she has taken growing up, still haunts her even when she already has a daughter. Bus has her food cart to help her get by, as a single mother. However, it's not enough to pay her husband's debt, and the landlord wants her to pay the money, or they will be removed from the house. Bussy's husband is nowhere to be found, so she has no choice but to pay the debt one way or another. Bus always makes sure that her daughter eats vegetables, and takes her medicine whenever they eat. After that, she chains the gate before going out to the streets, pushing her food cart. But then, in less than an hour on the road, Bus gets caught in the middle of a riot. As violence continues, one of the protesters, a taffle, takes Bus out of the riot into a corner. Another protester uses the food cart to block the police to protect his fellow objectors. After a while, the police eventually calm down the crowd with violence, and Bus parts ways with a taffle, who runs away while she takes home her food cart. As she returns home, Bus finds her daughter at the back, playing with the ants and plants. As a punishment for disobeying her, Bus repeatedly hits her daughter's arm, something her mother did to her until she grew up. Bus shed tears as she does so, as the painful memory flashbacks. But after seeing the red marks on her arm, Bus calms down and apologizes to her daughter. She says sorry too, and embraces her mother, but then she notices something. The daughter points at it, and Bus sees blood on her cart. She opens the compartment, and the protester's dead body comes out hanging. Instead of panicking and reporting it to the police like a normal would do, Bus cleans the blood from his body and uses the meat grinder on him. A few days pass, and a taffle's worries heighten as his protester friend is nowhere to be found. One day, while Bus is at the pharmacy, she runs into a taffle who works for the owner. They recognize each other, but unlike a taffle, Bus walks away and leaves, not caring about him. His attention quickly goes to Nita, a beautiful young woman whom he admires from afar. Later that day, Bussy's former maid's partner comes to her house, asking for her. Bus invites him to her home, and feeds him with her delicious cooking. After he devours the food, Bus informs the man that her maid ran away with her prick husband. Bus tells her daughter that she plans to turn their house into a noodle shop, like the one her mother used to run. The flashbacks reveal Bussy's mother repeatedly hammering her stepfather's hand, after she catches him making a sexual advancement on Bus. A few days later, Bus indeed turns their house into a noodle shop, and every customer seems to like her cooking. Disgustingly unbeknownst to them, Bus has a human head in her soup. Her business seems to be going well, and soon enough, a taffle becomes her companion after trying her noodle soup. He helps her around the shop as romance begins to ensue. One night while cleaning up, the landlord comes with two men, asking for the money. Bus wants more time as she has just started her business, but the landlord refuses to wait any longer. In the meantime, she serves them three servings of her noodle soup, which they enjoy. On the other hand, a taffle informs his friend's mother that he still has no lead on her son's disappearance. The police have also been on his back, following him for consecutive days, making him think they might be involved in his friend's disappearance. The following day, as he goes to Bussy's, a taffle finds her shop in the face, while she has bruises on her face and arms. Bus looks traumatized, so a taffle comforts her with his words, rather than muscles. Unbeknownst to him, Bus is not the victim, and the flashback will reveal it. It turns out, while the landlord is eating with his men, Bus slashes his throat with a meat knife. His men recoil in horror, as they begin to feel the effects of the poison. That Bus has mixed with their food, Bus starts violently attacking them one by one. She kills one of the men, by stabbing him with a sharp tool in his mouth, then repeatedly smashes the chubby one's head to a nail, before ending his life with a large knife. After them, she expressionlessly watches the landlord rivel to death, after removing the knife. The floor literally looks like a bloodbath from the three men she just murdered, and although she's a woman, Bus manages to drag their bodies all by herself. She cleans the mess, while her daughter watches like it's a regular thing. After that, she cleanses their bodies before butchering them as the new meats for her noodle soup. As the flashback plays, a taffle assures that he will always be there for Bus. As Bus feels a taffle's care for her, their feelings soon lead them to the bed, where he massages, caresses, and lands smelly kisses on Bussy's naked body. As they engage in a fast workout, the daughter stands outside, peeking through the small door gap, and this scene prompts a flashback. A much younger daughter does the same thing, watching her hormone-rich father engage in an affair with another woman, they're made no less, while her cash-poor mother is selling food. They eventually catch her watching them, and when Bus returns home, she finds her daughter's prosthetic leg on the floor. 
Upon seeing that, she looks for her daughter and finds her at the back. The flashback ends, and while Bus is awake, Atafal finds a cabinet full of her daughter's medicine. He remembers Bus buying at the pharmacy, but all of them are still unused. This raises his suspicions, so Atafal looks around the house, like he's looking for something. Another flashback reveals that the daughter's father and mistress take her to the back, where they put her inside the big jar. Then the mistress sits on the lid to drown her, but the daughter cannot be easily killed just like that. As they push her head in the jar, Bus catches them in the act, so she marches at them angrily and knocks them down, before tearing off the mistress's leg flesh to stop her from running away. She then wounds her husband's leg, causing him to fall down on the cut and sharp bamboo sticks, one of which goes through the corner of his eye. As she turns around, she follows the traces of blood from the mistress's wound, who's trying to escape. Bus cuts off her right arm with one slash and a cutting knife, and then drags her. After that, she returns to the jar to free her daughter, but it's too late. Her daughter is dead from drowning. Just then, Atafal reaches the back, where he finds the daughter's prosthetic leg on top of the jar. He removes the lid, only to find the daughter's head floating in the water. As Atafal stumbles from shock, he notices Bus standing not far from him, so he bravely confronts her. Bus sputters as she tells Atafal that her daughter is only sick and is still alive. Atafal rebuts that she's crazy, because it's clearly a dead body floating in that jar. Suddenly, Bus screams aloud in agony, before breaking into tears, and the flashback scenes reveal that she has been pretending that her daughter is alive all along. She talks of her daughter's doll, as if it's her daughter, and the slash marks she did on her daughter were actually on herself, but she's a little child. The next scene takes place at the police station, where Tafel gives his statement to the officers, claiming that Bus is mentally ill and disturbed. As he tells the police how Bus seems normal, a flashback reveals him digging up two dolls tied together. At that same time, Bus is in the other room, getting interrogated by a police officer. He asks them about the mistress and her husband's whereabouts, but Bus remains silent, as what she did to them flashbacks in her mind. It reveals that after wounding them, Bus ties their hands with a wire, and this memory causes her to scratch the chair she's sitting on. She then ties them together, and even though both are still alive, they can't do anything as they're fatally wounded. After that, she stares at them for an awkwardly long time, before taking a thick wire and plunging it into her husband's cheek, piercing the mistress too. The scene returns to the present, where the police let go of Bus, as they still don't have concrete evidence or proof of Atafal's claim. Another flashback reveals the mistress using black magic and the two dolls Atafal dug up, so as to lure Bussy's husband into her sticky hormones. The flashback ends, and Atafal moves on with his life, this time with Nita. As he develops another romantic relationship, Bus still puts her head in the jar, but just not to drown the voices. She does this to drown her anger and jealousy too. She stalks Atafal endlessly. Another flashback reveals Bussy's head wriggling to remove her head out of the jar while she's being molested by an unknown man and her stepfather. Soon after, Bus becomes pregnant, and after finding out what happened to her daughter, Bussy's mother descends into madness and cannibalism, something Bus has adapted to growing up. After the traumatic flashbacks, Bus goes to Nita's house and lures her into her home by lying that a taffel will come to meet her. Not long after, a taffel comes to Nita's house, only to find out that Bus had lied to Nita, and he knows it's not an accident. Bus gives Nita a glass of water with sleeping powder, and when she regains consciousness, Nita finds herself bathing in blood inside a freezer. She screams in horror and disgust, as she finds heads and limbs floating around the literal bloodbath. Another flashback reveals Bus cutting off the mistress's partner's leg, before knocking him out and beginning the torture. She hammers nails on his fingers, and although it hurts like hell, the man tries his best to free himself. However, Bus returns shortly after carrying a winnower of spices, which she forces into his mouth. After that, she lets him crawl away, but only to let him find her husband eating the flesh of the mistress's leg. As he stumbles in horror, Bus cuts off his fingers and knocks him unconscious. She then hangs him with a chain and plunges a knife into his abdomen. Meanwhile, Nina tries to get out of the freezer while screaming for help, but she fails, as there is stuff on the lid stopping her. At that same time, a taffel rushes into Bussy's home. But when she hears his screams of threat at her from downstairs, Bus returns upstairs. She opens the gate slightly, but Taffel barges in and asks about Nita's whereabouts while tightly gripping her arm. Bus ironically remarks how men always resort to violence, prompting Taffel to return to his senses and apologize for unintentionally hurting her. She leads Taffel upstairs and goes down, only to find that Nita has escaped the freezer. Bus feels around the inside of the freezer when Nita sneaks behind her and tries to push her. However, Bus balances herself inside and quickly grabs Nita by the hair. Nita breaks free and runs, when she finds Bussy's husband and the mistress's bodies lying around. Although she initially stumbles, Nina calms herself down and hides away from Bus. She starts climbing up the stairs slowly and silently when Bus slashes her Achilles. Nita screams in pain as she falls onto the cold ground, knocking herself out. However, Atafal still can't hear her voice, 
So Bus takes her into a room and ties her to a table. She sharpens her large knives first before cleansing Nina's arms. Meanwhile, Atafel finds Nita's shoulder bag while waiting upstairs, confirming that Bus indeed has Nita. So he starts looking for them and catches Bus hammering a nail on Nita's arm. Although already caught in the act, Bus still hammers the nail, so Atafel pushes her over. He then wakes up Nita, but upon seeing him remove the nail from her arm, she thinks he's Bus's accomplice. She grabs one of the knives to protect herself from Atafel, who tries to explain the truth, but then he notices that Bus has left the place. At that same time, Bus strikes fear in everyone she passes by as she walks outside, covered with blood and holding a knife. Bus looks deranged and utterly out of her mind as she hears the voices in her head again. Atafel follows her into the local market, but Bus is already walking at the train rail barefooted. Another flashback reveals a traumatic experience. It turns out her stepfather sells her out to a man who sexually abuses her at their first meeting. One day, while eating with a friend, Bussy's stepfather and his friend start vomiting before losing consciousness. It reveals that Bussy's mother poisoned them, after discovering what he did to her daughter. This is the start of them descending into complete madness. Like Bus, her mother uses human flesh as meat in her noodle soup shop. The scene returns to the present, wherein Bus stares at the lake from the bridge. She breaks down into tears as she remembers herself having a home pregnancy due to financial issues. As the daughter comes out of her, Bus fails to catch the baby, causing her to fall and have a disfigured face growing up. She then starts hallucinating her daughter in the water. Not long after, a taffel finds her, and he apologizes for adding to her traumatic experiences with men. However, the voices in her head tell her to kill Atafal, as he's a bad person. Bus tries her best to fight them, for the sake of her remaining saneness, but she fails miserably, as she starts seeing her daughter's face and hearing her voice, calling out to her for them to come home. Bus drops the knife before jumping off the bridge to drown herself and escape everything. Night has already come, and the police conclude that her body might have floated away, as they fail to find her. Atafal is taken to the police station where he's charged with the murders, as his fingerprints are on one of the murder weapons and because of Nita's statement. Meanwhile, Bus survives and enters a house, where she hallucinates her mother chopping off the human flesh she butchered from her victims. The film ends with a mother and a father showing violence to their young daughter, while people only watch and pass by the scenario, a problem that society still cannot face. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.